Hi, Jessica here. Welcome back to My Transgender Nation. Today, we're doing an interview with Sophie. She is a trans activist and social blogger, and she's agreed to sit here and tell us her story. Welcome, Sophie. Uh, hi. Hi. Welcome to My Pleasure Transgender to Nation. I'm glad you could take the time to do this with us today. Thank you. All right. So Sophie is uh, going for her PhD. She is in the top 100 list of transgender bloggers, currently number 17. And uh, so I thought, wanna... yeah, you go. So I thought it'd be fun to, to hear from Sophie. Sophie, why don't you start by telling us your personal story, whatever you feel comfortable sharing with us? Well, uh, first I was born. Um, I know this because I was there. <laughs> Um, I knew I was different when I was four years old. That's about the time that people figure out their gender, somewhere between three and five. Um, however, I knew that I was not a boy. And on the street where I grew up, a very small, dying industrial town in southeast Pennsylvania, um, I would play with the girls on the street. Uh, until one day that uh, I was called in, it was summer, uh, I was called in, I was playing with a girl across the street, uh, and my dad was not very happy with me. Uh, mm -hmm. He said, uh, I'm not raising any bleeps. Ooh. There was an F word in there. Yeah. Um, and I got the beating of my life. Ooh, so cool. I got the impression that, uh, okay, well, this girl thing, I got to keep it quiet. And so I did. Um, my dad was military and we were very, you know, we were like a lot of people in my time. I grew up in the 60s and 70s, 80s. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of kids in my time, we received corporal punishment and that sort of thing. And my dad was military, so he, he was a big, big dude. Um, when I was around 12 or 13, I got my first job slinging newspapers and I had money in my pocket and I was like, well, wait a second, maybe I could get some like girl clothes and, you know, see how see if that helps this turmoil inside of me because it never went away. Uh -huh. It just, I just hit it. And I got picked on all the time on the street because I was a, I was a very small kid undersized. Okay. So I got picked on a lot and I didn't like playing the usual games, you know, baseball, football, um and that sort of thing although I, i'm a good baseball player um in any case i got i ordered some things for the sears catalog and since i was usually the first one home i usually you know i could easily pick up the stuff so no one knew about it i only got caught dressing once and that was by my older brother and he i bribed him so he you know <laughs> <laughs> you got away with it. <laughs> so I got away with it. To his to his credit, he never told. Then again, yeah. I bribed him with a lot of money. Yeah. For, well, <laughs> a lot of money at the time. A whole month's pay at Burger King, because I was also worked at Burger King eventually. Wow. But in any case, when I was 16, um, I decided, you know, boys don't do this sort of thing. Men don't do this sort of thing. At the time, I was taking martial arts because I was tired of being picked on. Mm -hmm. um, I was a lean, mean fighting machine. And so I took all my girl stuff out to the burn barrel in the back and burned it all. And that was in August of 1983. I immediately fell into a deep depression because I knew that this was the end of all this, and that I better man up. And so I did. Now, the only person that I had uh, as a role model for manhood was my father, like most guys. And my dad was a very angry man, still is, but he's mellowed a little bit with time. My mouse got wrapped up with the uh, thingy oh. cord. That's why I was no playing with it. Um, but he... So that's what I became. I became angry, sullen. I didn't let anyone really close to me. Um, I had friends, some friends, but I didn't really let anyone that close to me because I didn't want them to even guess at my secret. Um, whenever I tried to ask a girl out, I usually got, I don't look at you as one of the guys. You know, you're just a friend and that sort of thing. Hated that. 
Went to college, joined a fraternity because that's what men do. Started at Drexel, transferred to Penn State. And uh, has just kept going on through my life. Eventually, I got married, which, I, as as you know, is the cure for being transgender. Uh, yeah, yeah, so they say, anyway. Right? It's the cure. Sure did. Sure. You have a daughter? And uh, eventually... In 2008, you know, my daughter had been born in 2007, and uh, my wife, who loves Halloween just like I do, uh, suggested that, you know, we do a different group costume this next year. Uh, and the year before, we'd done Lois and Clark. I have a Superman t-shirt. I had a, a button-down Oxford sort of thing, and I had a tie that was loose, glasses, and I put the S-curl on my hair and everything. So I was I was Clark Kent. She was Lois Lane. She was in a business suit with a little notebook and... Well, she said, let's do that again. I said, well, we never repeat ourselves. Let's, you know, and she's no, this time you're Lois. And I'm like, all right. And I was like, immediately, I'm you know, like, I don't know, uh, inside. Uh, no, I've got this under control. It's been under control for 25 years. Now, mm -hmm. I'd had something tearing me to pieces most of my life, and especially since college. Now, I thought it was just the alcohol or something. So I wrote a book about my college experiences, which was never published. I'm rewriting it now. We'll get to that later. Um, and I finished the book in 2006. Never, as I said, never published. Uh, in 2008, Halloween, we go out, and unfortunately, that broke the dam. That that those 25 years of feelings came flowing out. But by this time, we had something called the internet. When I was a kid, I was the only freak like me in the planet. Sure, yeah, yeah, so, and you had nothing to to associate it with at all. Not one bit, because right. we did. You know, the way I understand is back in the sixties and seventies, um, if you wanted transgender material, you had to go to a, a porn shop. Yeah. So, and like look in the want ads in the back of the porn magazines for hey transgender. So I didn't know, um, but now there was the internet, so I looked it up. And I found out, okay, transgender, that's what this is. Okay, well, I'll go get myself a makeover to, and just to see how I look, you know, with a professional makeover. And I'll probably look like shit and then that'll be the end of it. Well, I, I went to Femme Fever in, in New York. And uh, Karen up there, she did an amazing job. Yeah. Um, she was finishing me up and I hadn't seen myself. I told her I didn't want to see myself until she was finished. Um, she was finishing up, said, what name do you use? And I said, well, I've been using Lisa, but I could use, I could, you know, um, available for suggestion. And she stood back for a second, looked at me. She said, you know, I have a strong feeling that your name is Sophie. And then she turned the chair around and I looked at myself as, you know, female for the first time. And she said, say hello to Sophie. And I couldn't believe that was me in the, in the mirror. Yeah. Um, so I've been Sophie ever since. Wow. Um, By suggestion, no less. Yeah. So it's not like I picked my name. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, you know, I did, but, um, Sophie was a popular name in 1966 when I was born. So it fit and it means wisdom in Greek. I can use all the wisdom I can get. <laughs> And it's the name of a German heroine, Sophie Schall, who founded the White Rose, a, a German anti-Hitler group. She eventually got beheaded along with her brother for oh, doing wow. that by the Gestapo. Big, a big hero in Germany. So after that, I found a, uh, I'd been seeing a therapist for depression for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a different therapist. Who and I do specialize in gender, Dr. Maureen Osborne. And I said, Cure me. And she said, There's no cure. Yeah. And I was like, Great. Now, my wife didn't know at all. She had no clue. Um, and so it went. So I went to monthly meetings at Renaissance, Southeast Pennsylvania Renaissance in Wayne, PA. They, they're still going. And uh, afterwards, we'd go to a party, Angela's Laptop Lounge, which is a mobile party for trans people and their and their friends. Okay. And that's still going. Um, but that's what I would do once a month. That was my weekend out. I told my wife I was going to be playing Dungeons and Dragons and out with the guys. I right. just didn't tell her how the guys were dressed. <laughs> Let that part out. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> so once a month, I'll go get a hotel room, usually at the Motel 6. And I'll go see Amanda Richards at True Colors Makeup Artistry in, in uh, Bethlehem for a makeover. I learned a ton from her. She is just absolutely amazing. Um, and then go down to the Renaissance meeting and then to the Angela's, back to the hotel room, clean up, go home. And I began to live for those weekends. How long so, did you do that for? Well, I told my wife about Sophie in 2000 and was it 11 or 12? Either way. It was in either 2011 or 12. So and she was okay with years it. Years at this point, then. Yeah, it was years of lying to my wife. You know, wow. to the person, the person that you know, I said, yeah, yeah, love, yeah. honor, yeah. cherish. Yeah, you get the idea. Yeah, um, you're all too well. So yes, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's everyone. All of us know this one. Uh, no, that's right. I think it was 2012. I'm looking it up on my blog. Woman called woman named Sophie is the name of the blog. There's your plug. Yeah, May. 2012. Okay. So anyway, she was cool with it. She just didn't want to see it. And she was cool, you know, being one or two weekends a month, which is fine with it. But then eventually her mother found out and um, I got thrown out. We were living with her mother. Oh. So I got thrown out. That was in, uh, uh, that was August 30th, 2013. Two, uh, three weeks later, my best trans friend in the world committed suicide. <gasps> Sheesh. Uh, Lisa Empanada, and I still don't know how I survived that month. Yeah. Eventually, um, in December of that year, early December of that year, I was driving from where we live, where I was living, which is Southeast PA. I was driving up there to here to Penn State, where I live now. And in my passenger seat, I had a shotgun that I borrowed. I don't own guns. I don't like guns, but I do know how to shoot them. Um, because a man learns to shoot a gun. There you go. Yeah, go hunting. Yep. Yeah, my family. All the males in my family went hunting, and I went once. Hated it. But in any case, uh, I was going to come up here. Uh, it was a snowy day, miserable weather, and I said, I'm going to go up behind the line trying to blow my head off. Now, and it's Christmas break. Nobody will find me for weeks. I got about halfway. And I couldn't stop thinking of my daughter. Um, and so I turned around because the decision at that point was between um, suicide and transition. So it was at that moment I said, okay, I'm going to transition. I was going to, to transition with Lisa. We were going to go through it together. Mm -hmm. um, but, well, she broke she her side it. of that bargain. Yeah. I told my wife. I told my, I started telling people, I started, to, I told, you know, told my therapist, I told my parents at the end of December, 2013, mm -hmm. they were initially okay with it. Really? And That's kind of interesting. Believe it or not. Wow. They were initially all right with it. What they about said it'll take time to get used to. I did. I thought sure. That was, you know, How old is your daughter at this point? Uh, that was in 2013. Teen, so she was five. Okay, so she's young. Yep. Told my brother the same day. He laughed at me. I barely spoken to him since, but we never got along. My yeah. older brother, one of two. I'm one of two. Um. Eventually, I transitioned March of 2014. Um, and so here I am, almost nine years later. Yeah. All but nine years later. Um. I worked at a bookstore, a chain bookstore at the time, and their management was very helpful in my transition. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, you know, the, the corporate level was very helpful, and the management in the store were helpful. The employees in the store, not so much. Yeah, well, way of the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I was let go by that chain bookstore. Um, because myself and 2,300 of my best friends, every head cashier, boop, fired. So couldn't find another job and finally decided, you know what? If I can't find another job, I may as well go back to academia. Here I am. So I had a career before I transitioned. I was I did freelance instructional design. And I was doing all right with it. But 
as soon as I transitioned, that was the end of that the phone call stopped coming. Um, eventually, my dad disowned me. Oh, wow. Um, my wife is now divorcing me. I lost 90% of my friends when I came out. But fortunately, you know, trans people, we we have a very nice net mm -hmm. to catch us when we fall. So, um, so here I am. Wow. There's a lot, a lot of things I skipped, even though I just monologued no, no, no. however, however long that, that was. That was a great way to tell your story. Thank you. So, um, so are you happy you. that you did it? No. You're not. I'm at peace. You're at peace, but you're not happy that you did no. it. No, not at all. You're not living your best self at this point? No. No. But no. then again, I'm in the middle of a divorce. Yeah, I hear and you. And I don't want this divorce. Yeah. So, um, so then, so tell us now that you, you know, you, you, you transitioned, mm -hmm. you're, you're going through these large events in your life. How did you come to uh, blogging? Um, I have been a writer all my life. I've always written. Okay. Um, I have a minor in creative writing and then my undergrad. Um, Penn State as well, by the way. Um, so I was always, I always wrote and I started a guy blog before all this happened because blogging was the thing to do in 2007. Oops. Hold my calls, please. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. And I started blogging because my friend Kim Huddle had a, a wonderful blog about, it's called Traveling Transgendered. And uh, Kim is, Kim is a heterosexual cross-dresser, married, and she goes on business trips dressed as Kimberly. Um, and at the airport where in where she lives, they are there, they know Kimberly, you know, that sort of thing. They don't know the boy side, but they know Kimberly. Um, so it right what used to be about her adventures and that sort of thing. She hasn't posted in about a year, but she's got a lot going on too. Um, but she inspired me. And so I was like, what the hell? So I started it, started my blog on MySpace. If you remember that. Yes, I do. And eventually transferred it over to a Blogspot, where it's been ever since. I've been writing a blog since 2000 and, uh, 2008. So wow, that's quite a long time. I started it right after I went to the... Um, for the makeover in December 2008. Uh huh. So. So, what do you talk about on your blog? Whatever I feel like. Give us, give us the, you know, give us a little synopsis of what you're talking about on there. Well, um, first I started with a, I had a column on TG Forum, and I still have that column on TG Forum. And my brief was to write about lying to your, to the people in your life, mm -hmm. and which I was good at, which is horrible. I hate the fact that I had, you know, I hate lies. Sure. I cannot stand them. And the fact that I was lying to people was just, eventually, you know, I could, I write about whatever I want to teach you for me. I write about anything I want to blog. Um, I usually write about what's happening. Um, what life is like. I, you know, wrote about my transition, all the steps to it, all the steps after, um, the people I know. Um, the only thing I try not to write about is family stuff. Um, my, you know, my parents and that sort of thing. I try not to write about them. My dad, my wife and daughter, I don't mention by name. I call them wife and daughter. That was their idea. And uh, right now my last entry was about the divorce. And um, two entries before that was about my mother's death. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. She had a long battle with Alzheimer's, but there is a bright side to that. Okay. Um, my father asked for my help. When wow, was... after disowning you. Yeah. That's quite a switch. Well, um, yeah, he lives in Southern Delaware. And so I would, you know, help him with advice because I, Used to work in the financial industry as well, mm -hmm. so I helped with that. And I helped, you know, 
with advice, medical, I'm a former paramedic, blah, 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 blah. And we established a relationship again. So now we're speaking again. Well, that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I I think my mother really would have wanted that. Yeah, I bet she would have. So my dad and I talk at least once a week now. Well, and he says he realizes he has a daughter. So, but I have written jokes. I have written about uh, conferences I attend. Yeah. Trips I take. Um, I said about friends, current events I'll write about. I'm a screaming, raging liberal, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's what the, that's what the blog's about. There you go. I used to write once a week religiously, um, but with the course load of the PhD, yep. um, for example, this book here, yeah. one week to read it. I have a paper due tomorrow on this book. I'm a little better than halfway done. Well, God bless you. I, I, you know, I'm, I've never yeah. been a big reader, so that would be tough for me. But. That's one of three courses. Wow. So it's three books a week. And what's, you know, PhD in what? What are you going for? I'm going for my PhD in continuing learning in adult education uh-huh. with a minor in gender studies. Oh, how so appropriate. I, <laughs> well, I'm studying um, transgender violence. Oh, wow. So anti-transgender <laughs> violence. So I, I, I study a lot about fragile masculinity because I think that's the most direct cause of of the anti transgender violence, you know, the fact that we, you know, oh, we break the binary, which is false. There is no binary. Yeah. Um, it's a continuum. But in any case, uh, that, and then you have the whole intersectionality. Intersectionality. The reason that most in the, in America, at least, the most transgender women murdered are women of color. Well, that's because you're intersecting uh, the racism with the transphobia lethal combination yeah so and there's also sexism involved sexism involved because you know women folk so that's what i'm studying and i'm in my third year my last year of classes wow then take, yeah then i take my comprehensive exam which is uh everything that i've learned in my entire life and probably back when i was a zygote is fair game in that oh boy yeah <laughs> and if i pass that I can work on my dissertation. Interesting. Well, I, I wish you the best of luck with that. And I, I'm, something tells me you're going to do well with it. So I, jo- I would be joining a very small fraternity slash sorority of trans scholars. There are some amazing trans scholars out there. Yep. Um, and both, you know, doesn't matter what degree they have. They're just amazing. Yep. And, um, but in my university, I'm the first one to go, first transgender person to go through adult education. So gotcha. mostly they, the transgender people go through um, sociology, engineering, yep. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that. Thanks. It sounds like quite the adventure you're going through. It is an adventure. Yeah. Along with everything else in your life, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's all. There you go. <laughs> What advice would you give to someone who is either going through a transition or has someone in their life that is going through a transition? What I usually recommend to people who are considering transition is transition has to be the absolute last resort. You have to exhaust everything. And I do mean everything before you consider transition because it, ends your life it destroys your life because even though you're still the same person the person you were is gone um you know my wife said even though you are essentially the same person you're not so you're not the man i married i said well yeah i get that (laughs) so um but in my case you know, my former identity is gone. Right. It's like a death. Yeah. So be prepared for that. Be prepared. Have a plan. For God's sakes, have a plan. 
Um, plan for everything and make plans within your plans. Okay. Um, what if I get thrown out? Do I have a place to live? Look up for transgender inclusive housing because a lot of housing, a lot of um, homeless shelters don't take trans women. Um, trans men are seem to be fine across the board, you know, because no one bothers them. Maybe because they pass better. I don't know. But in any case, um, make sure you have a place to live. Make sure you have an income of some kind. A lot of jobs, even though they talk, they talk good. Yes, we have a gender policy. You know, up here, that's where that policy is, where the rubber meets, meets the road. If they want you out, they'll find a way. Yeah. So make sure you've got a backup plan for that. There you go. Good advice. Um, when it comes to family, if you're married and children, have a backup plan for that. Be prepared for them not want, not even wanting to see you. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, my daughter is one of my biggest supporters. Mm -hmm. um, but be prepared for that. Have a plan, uh, which means obviously have a therapist. Well, you, you kind of need that anyway. But yes, yeah, I, have I a would therapist. say start with a therapist is one of my rules of yep. thumb. Great yep. place to start. Start with a therapist. Yep. And sure. if possible, and this is a lot easier now on the internet, but if possible, find local trans women. Mm -hmm. Establish relationships of some kind, be it friendship, acquaintance, whatever. Mm -hmm. Have that net ready. Yeah. Because you're going to want it and you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Yeah. Because once any of this goes on, you're going to need that. They're going to be your family. They're, yeah. And let's face it, I mean, I really know nothing about you, Jessica. Yeah. But I, one thing I do know is that we share a common, what used to be a secret. Yeah. I don't well, have to explain what trans means to you. No. You no, it. actually, our stories are very similar. So it's pretty so, interesting. Yeah. But you get it. So no, these are the people who will it. get it. Yep. So, yeah, have put yourself together a network, even if it has to be online, preferably in person. But if it has to be online, yeah. see if there's any places like a, an LGBT center near you. Yep. Get to know them. Mm -hmm. But be ready. The, the hardest thing about transition is, first of all, admitting it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolute hardest part. Um, so once you get past that, and then it just goes in steps. Sure. So name change. Um, if you can afford surgery, lucky bitch, um, you know, setting that up yeah. and everything. Yep. Very good advice. Thank you, Sophie. Mm -hmm. So if people want to uh, keep up with you and see what you're writing in your blog, where can they find your blog? A woman named Sophie is the name of the blog. Just Google it um, and you'll come up with it. There you including go. a picture that's over 10 years old back in the <laughs> there. All right. There you so go. So that's it. That's true. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all as Sophie Lynn. Okay. Great. Sophie L Y N N E. No, Sophie Lynn is not my real name. There you go. So. But it works. That's that's your uh what's that your pen name? Is that it, yes, my pen name was also my nom to trans. Oh, okay. That's how everyone, all my friends know me, Sophie Lynn. So there you go. That works. Yeah. So Here that's how you can, and yeah, so that's how you can keep up with all that. Okay. Well, I hope, really you, uh, I hope you keep everybody informed as you progress through your PhD with that. Be, I uh, even put a couple papers up. Oh, have you really? That's cool. <laughs> wow. That's very cool. Talk about zero hits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. But, but that's hit, so cool. yeah, I used to get a thousand hits a day. Yeah. Now, if I get a hundred, I consider it a victory. Oh, there you go. Because blogs aren't a thing anymore. But yeah, well, you know, you got to keep up with all the changes. It's, I don't know. Yeah, how podcasts are the them. way to go. Say what is podcasts? Podcasts, yes. And interviews on whatever that. What is this thing called? This is, Steamy, be on, this is Streamyard I use, but it's going to go up on YouTube, and then actually mm -hmm. we take the audio and put it up as a podcast. So we hit both. So. I do have videos up on YouTube. Most yeah. of them are pretty old. Yeah, but they're there. Very cool. Well, Sophie, thank you so much for taking the time today to talk to us. That was thank a very you. interesting story. I wish you the best of luck with your PhD and your yeah. life in general. And, well, if uh, I get this PhD, you'll be able to hear me from wherever you are going, yeah! Yeah, there you go. Good and then after that, you hear me. <laughs> well, I hope that all works out for you. Yeah. I'll be the most uh, overeducated fry cook at McDonald's. Perfect. 
<laughs> Such a beautiful thing. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in again today. I'm Jessica, and this is My Transgender Nation. You can find us on Facebook at My Transgender Nation or website, mytransgendernation.com. Obviously here on YouTube. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe. If you've got ideas for uh, future topics, please send us a, a message and let us know what you'd like to see us talk about. We'll do our best to accommodate you. I hope you have a great day and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again real soon. Bye.